Thank you, Kaspar. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, as Kaspar mentioned, uh, it's a very special moment for me to, this morning here because I've been on the other side of this for the last five years, and uh, I'm actually enjoying WordCamp Europe really as a, uh, an attendee uh, and a speaker for the first time. Now I understand why everybody was enjoying that. I didn't get that before. I was like, well, they're crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very honored to be uh, here with you this morning. Uh, my name is Paolo Belcastro. Uh, I come from Vienna, Austria, uh, where I've been living for six years. And um, yeah, as Kaspar mentioned, distributed uh, teams and remote work have been in my life for as far as I can remember. But to, today I would like specifically to share three experiences that I had in the last 12 years. And these three experiences are quite different from each other, but they have something linking them. And I find that in what connects them, there is a key to giving back to this awesome WordPress community some of the amazing value it gives us, and at the same time grow professionally and personally. This presentation is gonna be a little bit different from uh, what, um, Usually you have a presentation, then you have questions in the end, you know, so that you can ask the, the speaker some things. Now, I like, people who know me know I like to talk to people, but uh, they also know I like to talk with people. And so I'd like this to be a little more of a dialogue instead of me talking to you and then at the end only you asking questions to me. And so, as in a dialogue, uh, I'm gonna tell you some things about me and I'm gonna ask you a few questions so that you can tell me things about you. And then all over the time we have together, you can ask me questions and we'll take a couple of breaks to actually answer them. So how does this work? Well, um, you take your phone, your iPad, your laptop, whatever you have with you, and you go to uh, that address, www.menti.com, and you use that code, and for a little more precision, here are the instructions. And then you will see a slightly different version of the slides we have on screen that allows you to ask me questions, react to what I say, or to um, answer to questions that I uh, ask you. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the, those details up, up top for a little bit. And by the way, this works also from home, so I know that we have a live streaming today. If you're home, you're free to please answer, ask, react, same way. After all, this is about distributed teams, so it's a distributed talk. So the first experience, let's, uh, before going to the first experience, let's do a little bit of training. I'm gonna ask you a few questions, and you answer, and so we see if this works well. So first of all, how are you feeling this morning? It's the first day of WordCamp Europe, second for those of you who were at the Contributor Day. Um, are you feeling energized and ready, or you looking for coffee, or you, oh, nobody is wondering why they're here. That's great, that's good. So, uh, good, I see that most people are energized and ready, and for those who need coffee, uh, it's totally normal at this time of the day, so no worries there. We'll, I think there is coffee out there and tea, by the way, so. Uh, let's move on with another type of question. I come from Vienna today, but I lived in Switzerland before, and before that I lived in France, and originally I came from Italy. Where do you come from? Tell me. Oh, nice. We have a lot of local members of the local community, that's amazing. So see people from all over Europe, I like that. It's what makes WordCamp Europe so special that every year we have dozens. Oh, sorry, the code went away. Let's put it back here. I'm gonna try to leave it there for a little bit. So one, once more, people are coming from all over Europe and the world because I see many, many countries there that are not actually in Europe. And so let's see, Okay, of course, WordCamp Europe is in English. Uh, I do speak English, obviously. I was uh, born in Italy, I speak Italian. 
and I live for a long time in French-speaking countries, so I do speak French. I live in Austria now and I do not speak German, but that's the object of a different presentation. Uh, I'd love to know which languages you speak beside English, of course, that I assume. Oh, English is pretty present. Hindi, Croatian, Bulgarian, Russian. See, this is again the magic of WordCamp Europe to have so many different people of different origins uh, with us. And to introduce the first experience I want to relate today, I'm going to ask you one last question for now. So for many of you that may uh, remind old memories, uh, yeah, I, I, I like a third option for those who don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this question, Hoarder Alliance, is about the fact that the first real remote experience I had leading teams was actually playing World of Warcraft. So this is my character back in 2010. Uh, pretty proud of the mount, by the way. Um, I, I started playing that game very randomly. Uh, my wife and I just had moved to Switzerland from Paris. And, um, well, you move to a foreign country and you have two little kids at home. Uh, the result of that is you don't go out very much. If you have kids, you know what I mean. And if you don't have kids, you also know what I mean because your friends disappeared suddenly in a black hole. Um, and so you, we're far away from everything and we randomly started playing this game to, to have something different than watching TV to do. But step by step, we discovered that some of our friends were playing and they had a community and we started playing together and suddenly we were in a guild. And suddenly, I am an officer in that guild, and I'm leading raids of 10, 25 people trying to beat bosses in dungeons and, and, and things. And back then, I had no idea that could be a useful to me later. But I played from roughly 20, 2006 to 2010, and suddenly you realize that, oh, you have to organize those people, and you need a diverse set of skills to defeat a special boss, so you need to recruit the right people and you need to train them, and they need to have a certain level and equipment, so you need to give them assignments to do during the day, and then teach them strategy, record videos, prepare text, presentations. And later, working at Automatic, it hit me that that was actually the one experience in my life that was the most similar to leading a distributed team in a company. It's a bunch of people sitting in front of their computer in their homes, and uh, they bring those very different skill sets and different characters, and they train together, they establish a strategy, they try again and again and again, and finally solve a very complex problem that in a game is called a boss, uh, in work is called a project, but it's not very different. And, uh, more importantly, I learned something that was crucial in my later year, which is in a game, people are seeking pleasure. They want to enjoy playing the game. And if they don't have fun, they leave. There's nothing holding them back. There's no responsibility. There's no commitment. There's no contract. There's just, I come to play the game and I need to enjoy it every single night. And so that was when I realized that a distributed team can be really powerful, but one condition is that everybody needs to take pleasure in what they do. Even more so, I think, than a team that is all together in an office because we're all separate, all in our own home offices or co-working spaces or living rooms or whatever. And so having a bad day can have a much uh, bigger influence when you're isolated and you can just go and uh, grab a beer with a few colleagues afterwards. So that was the first thing for me, was playing with all those people remotely, I had a responsibility to make them enjoy the game. Um, I see there's a couple of questions. So the way it works, as you can see, is that questions uh, on the right, there's a little number. Uh, we can uh, see what is there. Uh, oh, what was your first business? So a very uh, long time ago, 
uh, that was 1994, I started uh, working in a photo studio that were, was working a lot with uh, fashion photographers. And the very first thing we were doing was um, photoshopping photos, preparing them for ads and, and things. And we realized very soon that there were already tons of people doing that. And so, you know, whenever there's tons of people doing something, it's boring and competitive. So we moved into interactive CD-ROMs because that was the big thing back then. Uh, but then we also realized that that was already an old thing, like interactive CD-ROMs were already stale. And, um, and we discovered this internet thing and we said, oh, look at that, websites, nobody's doing that, so it's gonna be much easier. And, uh, and that's how in 1994 I started doing, uh, making websites uh, as a freelancer. And then later I joined a team that was building a uh, hotel guide in Paris. So that was my first uh, business. Let's see. I think we have a second question here. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, <laughs> what was the most memorable Red Boss uh, you killed? Well, because I stopped shortly after, it was definitely the Lich King. Uh, and yeah, then I, we start playing for a number of reasons that uh, go way beyond the time we have here. But you can come and ask me. I will be at the happiness bar just later. Um, let's see what we have. Oh, what was my gear score? Oh my God, memory. Um, oh, this is a hard one. I, I don't want to give a random number. What I can say is that we were an amateur guild, so we have no first skills at our uh, leaderboard. We may have the first kill on a Saturday night at 10.55, something like that. Uh, but no, no, we, we weren't very good. We were just a bunch of adults with like day jobs and kids and, and stuff. So we were playing two, three hours every night. Uh, we weren't by any stretch uh, overstuffed. Uh, what's the next city country you'll call home? So that's interesting because I I moved to, to Austria thinking I will be there three to five years. And uh, the idea was, well, the next place will be an English-speaking country. And right now, I have to say, I really like Vienna. So we don't have a project of a, a, a new place for now. Uh, yeah, Vienna, you should visit Vienna. Whoever has not been to Vienna, you should go. And whoever has been to Vienna for World Camp Europe 2016, well done. Um, so, to talk a little bit about my second distributed experience, I'd like to ask you where you work from. Uh, as a general thing, do you work for a fully distributed company? Do you work for a normal office where you go every day? Or, or are you somewhere in between where you do have an office, but you also work remotely when you wish, and you're, you have flexibility? So that's interesting. That's very, very evenly spread. I think it's a great, great thing because a few years ago, the same question would have had very few people working for a fully distributed company. This shows that something that was sort of new and exotic 10 years ago is becoming uh, mainstream. And uh, so the second experience is my work at Automatic. So this is my office setup the day I joined Automatic uh, back in 2011. Um, Automatic was a company of a little more than 70 people back then. And um, so I, I joined Automatic knowing it was a distributed company, of course. That was one of the reasons why I applied. But what's really interesting is that about a year and a half into my time at Automatic, uh, somewhere in 2012, I still didn't have a real grasp of what it meant to be fully distributed. I know everybody was working from home, of course and we had meetups where I would meet people every once in a while. But one day I was invited to a hangout where that, well, the hangout happened every two weeks but I didn't know that at the time I was inviting for the first time and I was supposed to give a summary about the state of our sales in our, in our shop where we uh, sold the grades to users and I was ready, prepared, all good. When suddenly 30 minutes before the hangout starts, I start freaking out. I have like a panic, uh, almost a panic attack. And the reason I have that, it, it wasn't about my summary, I was ready. But I suddenly realized that everyone else in this hangout is actually leaving 
a few miles around San Francisco. And so immediately I picture myself in a TV screen with everybody else around a meeting room, like a you know, classic situation that I really hate because it's one of those moments where there's a lot going in the room that you don't get because people talk very softly and there's body language and you're just prisoner of this two-dimensional screen. And, uh, and so I start freaking out, but then, you know, I just, I breathe, I calm myself, I log into the Hangout, and there, the amazing thing happens that no one is in the same place. Someone is at home, someone is in a co-working space, someone is in a coffee shop, one person was in an airport. And that's when it hit me what it is to be 100% distributed, which is that you really, really do it even when you're nearby, even where, when you're in the same building sometimes, you really privilege the connection through the same tools that allow people from very far away to participate because that now evens the field. So you don't have those sort of aparte or those uh, side conversation. And along the way, I learned how it was important that everything is documented in a written form so that anybody, whether they're able or not to attend a meeting, for example, because of time zones, can actually uh, participate to the conversation. And Automatic has grown since from a little more than 70 people to a little more than 700 people, so 10 times in those seven years. And um, the one thing I think I learned from working there is that there is no real limit to what a distributed company can do. And for a lot of time, uh, you could hear always people saying that the next symbolic threshold, the next round number would be when it would fail, you know, like, oh, it's gonna work up to 10 people or up to 25 or up to 50 or to 100, but it keeps working. And actually there's no reason it doesn't because when you think about it, the bigger a company becomes, the smaller the difference between a distributed and a collocated company in the sense that if you look at large companies with thousands of employees, well, they happen to have people everywhere in the world. They happen to have people in many cities. Um, so it's special to be in 62 countries when you're 700, not that special when you're 60,000. Now, the, the biggest difference that remains is that often people located in the same cities in regular companies do work together. When, well, we, for example, share an office in Vienna where three or four of us go depending on the time of the year, uh, but we don't work together, like we just work at automatic. We don't work in the same team. So there's definitely still some differences, but I think there is really no limit in what a distributed team can do when you uh, learn those ways to communicate and when you bring in that little piece from the first experience, which is to keep the pleasure going. Because again, uh, one of the strengths of distributed workforce is also that the whole world is your oyster, both as a company you can hire everywhere, but as an employee you can also work for anyone. And so when the choice is uh, broad, the pleasure becomes a pretty big factor. You're not constrained um, by where you live. Uh, let's see, it looks like we have a few questions, so maybe if we, oh, how was my first year at Automatic? The first year at Automatic, so that was 2011, I joined in February 2011. Um, it, was, it was amazing, it was very intense. Uh, I started full time on the day before my team went to a meetup. So my first day working there full time it was flying to Vienna where I actually didn't live back then to meet a bunch of people who so far I had only uh, met uh, in chat. It was, um, yeah, it was a very rich year. I think it's probably the year of my, li of my adult life where I met the more people uh, at once in one year, uh, not counting school years, but those are, uh, are different. And it was, uh, and I was impressed all the time because everybody was so nice and so, it was that time where you don't know anything and you're learning and you're asking stupid questions and you're trying to find information and and you feel like you're useless because, uh, well, let's face it, for a few months you kind of are. Uh, but everybody was so, so patient and open and nice. 
and uh, was answering questions. So it was a pretty amazing year, I have to say, yeah. Uh, what platform do you use to connect everyone that is distributed around time zone? So uh, today we use Slack for uh, real-time conversation and sort of a synchronous conversation, even though it has limits for that. And then we use P2, a team you may be familiar with, for the real asynchronous conversation. Uh, we still have IRC as a backup and also because our systems guys love it. Uh, but yeah, it's still there as a backup and many of us just log in once every six months to check it still works uh, in case Slack went down. Uh, but Slack has pretty much taken over the, the real-time conversation now. We used to use a mix of IRC and Skype back in the day. Uh, those have been mostly replaced. And, uh, and then P2 contains all the information, like everything we uh, we do is documented there. What's the most challenging thing from working inside a distributed team? Um, I would say that the most challenging thing for me is how hard it is to celebrate wins. Like, there's, there's no equivalent online. This is something we also experience in gaming, by the way. There is no online equivalent to popping a bottle of champagne or sparkling fruit juice or whatever and, you know, be together in a room and, and be happy and, I don't know, dance and celebrate. Like, this is, this is the moment. I don't miss the sort of presence so much in day-to-day -day work. I think celebration is the, the, the place where I miss it more. And on the other side of the spectrum, and luckily that doesn't happen very often, but when something doesn't go well at all, when you, when a situation is very emotional, where when, when someone is very sad or a bit depressed, there also you miss like this opportunity to, I don't know, give a hug to someone or even just share a moment uh, of silence. And um, yeah, I think this is one of these little things where a moment of silence face to face is very, very valuable. A moment of, of silence online is just a moment. Like, it's not a moment of silence, it's just... So that is why I love traveling to meetups and meet uh, teams. Please don't hesitate to ask questions, um, but we'll, we'll make another break later. So yeah, the thing I learned at Automatic is essentially this fact that if you're really entirely distributed, there are no limits to what you, you, you can achieve. And I insist on the fully distributed because it's hard to do it partially. And I'm sure that everybody who has tried uh, knows what I mean when part of the company is distributed. Uh, it's hard to be on the same level of involvement of people who are in the sort of main office. So to move to the third experience, I wanted to ask you very simply, and you can check uh, several of these answers, how you uh, contribute to WordPress and I group that just in three categories, organizing meetups, organizing work camps, or being part of any of the different teams in Make WordPress. It doesn't have to be just writing code, but translation, documentation, accessibility, design, all of them. And uh, the reason I'm asking this question is essentially to show off this nice chart because um, I, I'm not going to say use something special based on these answers, of course. But the third experience I want to relate is the one of helping work in Europe. So it's important to me because it was a very, very big series of surprises. It started in 2013 when uh, a bunch of people decided to Europe deserved a big work camp like America had with San Francisco, and so they convinced the Foundation Workham Central that that was a good idea, and they started. And a few months in, uh, they pings me saying, hey, we would need some help. Can you jump on board? Because uh, we are a team. Well, the team was fairly small back then. Anyway, some, someone needed a little bit of help, and I say, yeah, okay. I had started... Um, 
the WordPress meetup in Vienna a few months before, and we were just getting started uh, with Luca, who is actually sitting there. Um, and so I was, my idea at the time was, I want to give something back to the WordPress community, and giving some of my time to organize community events seems like a good thing to do. So that was the, the beginning of it. And I, so I helped wrangling volunteers that year in Leiden, and I did the same thing the next year in Sofia, and then uh, I went on to wrangling sponsors in Sevilla in the next year. And uh, then we applied with, in, in the meantime, Vienna had uh, the, their first World Camp. We organized it in 2015. And so 20, we applied for 2016 World Camp Europe. We got World Camp Europe in Vienna in 2016. And then 2017, it was Paris, and I was leading the team. And, and I, for, for a while along that journey, I was thinking about what can I give to the community? So, okay, first you give your time just by doing stuff. You roll your sleeve, you help people. And then I thought, well, I, I'm leading distributed teams in automatic, and maybe I can help work in Europe by bringing some of it to the, to the, to the camp. And I realized one thing, um, which was people burning out, people working way too much. Like, this is a big thing to organize. You may not realize it as an attendee because it's very smooth and because that, this team is doing an amazing job, but it's hard. It's a lot of work. It's hundreds and hundreds of hours of work, and they go basically for 11 months a year. There's maybe one month off between one work camp and the work of, uh, for the next. So as we were thinking about Paris, I said, well, what if we increase the size of the team a lot? and we create sub-teams, and so instead of saying, oh, you two people are in charge of this, and you two are in charge of that, well, we say we have groups of five, six people in charge of every area, and so if someone, you know, life happens, work happens, sometimes you don't feel like you can invest as much time as you would like in your volunteer role, but that is normal, that, is, that happens. You should be able to step back for a little while without uh, feeling guilty of leaving one single other person in charge of all your tasks. And so we tried to organize those things a little bit and we, the, the team ramped up, I think uh, we, we ramped it up to more than 50 people as we were starting organizing Paris. Now knowing that we were overdoing it a little bit because we wanted to leave people comfortable to actually step back and abandon along the way if they wanted. So I was, this was my, my, my sort of train of thought at the time. It was, okay, I, in, in addition to giving time, I can try to give some of what I learned before. And what hits me, what hits me along the way is that I was actually learning a lot too. It wasn't just about me bringing something I knew. By, by leading those people, I, were, I was learning a ton of things because I was faking, facing situations that were not really the same as, that I had at work. Uh, we had different constraints. The pleasure dimension was also very strongly back in once again, because sometimes working together for a company, you have that little buffer. You know, when someone has a very bad day, uh, they will hang on because it's their job. They have a commitment and they also have a rent to pay at the end of the month and they have a family and they may not be willing to find something else. So the, you have that little extra buffer that allows you to go through. You can't take advantage too much of it, but it's there. In a volunteer uh, organized event, you go back to the fact that people need to take pleasure. If people feel stressed out, if people feel like they're burning out, well, why would they do it? It's, it's not fair. And so, so what came out of that for me in Work Camp Europe was, oh, that's very interesting because I feel that this participation to these community events is actually feeding my professional career. I'm learning things, I'm learning to be better at my job. And I think this is the key of the connection I wanted to make today, which is that on the one side you focus on the idea that working distributed, you can achieve anything. You can achieve events like this that are made by a bunch of people all across a continent or even more than one. 
And you add to that that you're giving something to the community that probably gave you a lot because if you're in this room, it's very likely that WordPress has brought a lot to your life and so giving back is a great thing to do. But in addition of that, it helps you actually build a career in this world that is more and more distributed and where the first step to work in a distributed company may be scary and so doing it through the participation in a community project or a work camp is actually a very good sort of first step, a very good ramp to get to learn uh, a new way to work. So this is basically my point tonight. Before concluding though, I would like to go see the last questions because there's a couple. Can you recommend a book that every remote team manager should read? So uh, that is an interesting question because I found something in the last few years which is that the best books that, I mean, the ones I found the more important to me were not specifically uh, focused on remote management. I just realized that management is not very different, remote or collocated. Um, personally, and you're totally okay, totally okay to disagree, but one of the books I enjoyed the more and that brought me the most value is Managing Humans by Michael Lopp. Uh, I will only give one suggestion because um, the question was singular, but uh, yeah, that one is really good. But it's, it's not specifically about remote uh, workers. Have you been in a burnout or how do you prevent it? I think I managed to dodge one very, very closely last year. Uh, and how I did prevent it is that last year at the end of Work Camp Europe 2017 in Paris, the day after Work Camp Europe was the first day of my three month sabbatical. And uh, yeah, this is something, I think that that was the moment where uh, had I had to go back to work the next day, um, it would have, like, I, I was at the beginning of a, a, a slippery slope. Um, so how I avoided it with a three month sabbatical so if you work for a company that gives you something like that, that's amazing. Uh, if you work for a company that doesn't, go tell them they should. Uh, because I came back three months later completely recharged and full of energy. And um, so yeah, that has worked. It was a little bit of luck too, but am I happy? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, I hope you're happy too. So before we, uh, before we part ways, we have a few more minutes and I would like to ask you something because you know, often you, you get out of a presentation and you either you learn something or you heard something inspiring or maybe you were just amused or maybe you were bored, I hope not, but, but then you move into the next presentation and then the next presentation and then the next one. So what I'd like to ask you is to take a couple of minutes, we have two minutes, uh, and think about what is the one thing, the one step, the one action you could take next week or next month or by the end of the summer to contribute to the WordPress community. That is, of course, something, anything, if you don't do it already, or something new, if you do it already uh, in other ways. And something that would put you in this situation of contributing to a distributed team that you could use to help the community while at the same time learn a new skill set. And yeah, just two minutes, I give you two minutes, write it down in your phone, tell it to your neighbor, write it down on a piece of paper, the back of your hand or your arm, whatever. Um, and in two minutes, I'll ask you something else. Two minutes. I'm gonna stand there for two minutes, not talking. I'm going to put back the code in case there are some last minute questions. And I have a 
tying that to it. So I'm going to mute. And if you, if you feel like telling it to everybody, feel free to put it as a question and we'll see it on screen too. It's, a, it's an app. So if you have done that, the last thing I would like to ask you is tonight at the parties or tomorrow or during the day or at the after party tomorrow, whenever you have a chance and maybe you meet someone you have never met before and you want to break the ice, don't hesitate to tell them what you just decided to do or ask them what they decided. Uh, it's a nice breaker, first of all, and it's a tiny commitment that will help you uh, to get to do it. That's all I got this morning. Enjoy the work camp. <laughs>